Now we move forward to the big step, and a lot of students hated this in high school. I got to tell you, I, th I think we're going to turn that all around. I really do. I think you're going to have some fun with this. And I'm, the most important thing is I'm going to be able to give you a very definite sense of direction. So many students who start proofs, they end up staring at them going, ah, what is this? I don't even know where to start. And I think I can take that completely out of your hands. So have an open mind. Follow me, and I think things are going to be really, really, really good for you, okay? I think you're going to finally conquer something that may have driven you nuts when you first saw it. What is a proof, and why And what do, why learn them? How, how do we do them? What are all of these different things that are going on with proofs? Well, look, this is the basic the idea. The word congruent means same size and shape. So... You would think if triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DEF, that means seven pieces of information. It means all of these simultaneous statements. It says the triangles are congruent, but notice also angle A is going to be congruent to angle D, the parts that correspond. Angle B up top is going to be congruent to angle E. Angle C, bottom right, is congruent to angle F. And then the piece AB on the left will equal the piece DE on the left. Um, the piece BC on the right will equal the piece EF on the right. AC on the bottom will equal DF on the bottom. And you would think that in order to prove two triangles were congruent, that you got to show all six of those parts. Then you can conclude the very first conclusion that the triangles themselves are congruent. But if you can't prove all six of those things, you'd say, oh, my God, then you can't prove that these triangles are congruent and that is not true the really cool thing is that you only have to prove at any point in time at most three of those six things show you what i mean you could prove the side the angle and the side of one triangle are congruent to the side the angle and the side of the other triangle and that guarantees the whole other parts of the triangle are all going to be congruent. So you only need side, angle, side. It's very important that you understand with side, angle, side, that this angle is nestled in between the two sides. If I marked either of the other angles, that would not be side, angle, side, because the angle would not be between the two sides. In fact, it would be ASS. And that's not allowed for obvious reasons. Okay. Next up. <clears throat> You could prove an angle, like the angles at A and D, the side, like AC and DF, and the angles at angle C and F. In other words, you could prove the side in between the two angles, the purple combination. That is enough to prove the triangles are congruent. You could just show angle side angle is congruent to angle side angle. Or you could show just the sides are congruent. That AB is congruent to ED, AC is congruent to DF, and BC is congruent to EF. Just show the side, side, side. And you've got the fact that the rest of the triangles must be congruent, all the angles. And I'm not going to draw the picture of it right now, but you could also prove AAS. If you prove an angle, an angle, and then the side not between the two angles, that is also enough to prove congruence in the triangles. So... <clears throat> Which two of these triangles can you can you prove congruent by the side angle side theorem? Now remember, with side angle side, you have to have the angle between the two sides. Well, as I look, I notice that in the first one, the angle is between the two sides. In the third one, the angle is between the two sides. In the middle one, uh uh angle is not between the two sides, so it's not side, angle, side. But there's something a little bit more shown here. When I write that triangle GFE is congruent to triangle IKJ, that means that the G corresponds to or matches up with the I. So do you see how the G is at the non-marked angle end of the segment with one hash mark, and so is the I? at the end of the segment with one hash mark and the angle at the other end. That's why the G matches up with the I. If you notice, the F is the angle. The K is the angle. And you'll notice that the F and the K are second in the order here. 
And lastly, the only one left, the E matches up with the J. So those are the two that you can prove by side angle side. Next up, which two triangles can you prove by side side side? And it's important to note the number of marks on each leg. Now, the way we mark congruence is, see this one hash mark here on WX and the one hash mark on XT and the one hash mark on DC? That means they're all the same. They're all the same length. You see the three hash marks on XY, UT, and EC? Even though EC doesn't look it. That means they're all the same. Do you see the two hash marks on WY and on US? That means they're the same. There's four hash marks on ED. That means it's not equal to any of the others. So the only ones that have the side, the side, the side, the one hash mark marking, the two hash mark marking, and the three hash mark marking are um, XYW and UTS. And here we have it. Now notice the X is between the one and three marks. And the T is between the one and three marks. So X corresponds to T. Y is between the two and three marks. So between two and three here is U. And the W is between one and two. And the S is between one and two. So that's how I make sure I'm in the right order when I list the triangles. Which two triangles can you conclude by SAS? Remember, side, the angle must be between the two sides and the hash marks have to match up. I also think it's pretty obvious here that, <laughs> that the two on the right are the two that are the same size. So we have triangle HIJ is congruent to triangle CED. Next up. Which rule explains why these two triangles are congruent? Yes, it would be SSS, right? There's no angles marked here anywhere. Next up, which rule explains why these are congruent? Well, what we would be looking at here is AAA. And the problem is AAA does not prove triangles congruent. It proves they're similar, but it doesn't prove congruent. So these triangles cannot be proven congruent. AAA does not prove congruent. Um, so can you conclude that these triangles are congruent? Well, let's see. We have an A, and we have an A, and we'll talk more about this later, but there's a vertical angle there for another A. That's AAA. The answer is no, they cannot be congruent. The so far summary. You don't have to prove all six of the corresponding parts of the triangles congruent to prove the triangles are congruent. SSS is congruent to SSS. Good enough. SAS congruent to SAS. Side angle side. Good enough. ASA angle side angle congruent to ASA angle side angle. Good enough. Angle angle side congruent to angle angle side congruent. Good enough. The two that do not work. ASS. Guess what you make out of yourself if you do that? I'm not saying and AAA. All right, so I promised you that I would get to the point where we simplified it a little bit. And now the next step to avoid proof block. Dun, 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 dun. And that is where we will start the next video.